What up, dudes? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Kevin Duty, and um, I'm having a bit of a heat wave over here where I live. Uh, so if you hear the fan on in the background, that's what that is. I did not want to sit down here and film a video without some uh, air flowing over my body because uh, I've been pretty much in the house uh, sweating my ass off all day because uh, I don't have AC. So um, that's where we're at. Hopefully the fan isn't too loud. And uh, today I wanted to do just a quick little video showing off my, uh, let's see, how many do I have here? One, two, three, four, my four favorite knives in my collection. And I have two, um, not really honorable mentions, but you know, um, they didn't make it in the top four, but I do love them very much. Um, so technically six or five, I mean, six, I can't count. All right, let's do it. First up, we'll start with um, this one because it was the first um, expensive knife that I ever bought. My Benchmade Bug Out. Um, this was my first big purchase um, getting into the knife world. Uh, you know, for years I was just a, uh, a cheap, cheapo Gerber guy, you know, less than $20 Gerbers uh, usually or uh, the cheapo uh, Kershaws. Not that anything's wrong with them, but you know. Um, I just I wasn't aware uh, of the the vastness of the knife world, and I didn't know that you could get a better knife than that. Um, so when I started getting into knives, um, the bug out was kind of at its height of popularity, and I pretty much succumbed to the uh, the massive uh, choir singing the bug out's praises, and. Um, I mean, it's still a great knife. Uh, I still carry this thing all the time. Um, I knew before I bought it that I was going to be replacing the scales. Uh, when you buy this knife, if you don't know, it comes with um, these kind of cheap feeling uh, FRN plastic handles. And they come that way because it's supposed to be a really, really light uh, backpacking knife kind of thing. But to me, it just felt too cheap. So um, I bought the knife. I saved up a little more money. I bought these beautiful um, titanium scales from Flytanium. I really, really love the milling pattern they have going on here. These are these particular ones are called the crossfade uh, pattern. Just, I just really love this milling pattern. Um, they kind of uh, slope in here towards the tip, so if you're pinching the knife like this, you get a really good grip right there. Um, I also replaced some of these body screws with uh, blue anodized titanium uh, body screws. And then finally, I added a copper backspacer in there. Um, so this is my, my ultimate bug out. Um, I, I mean, this thing, it fires so freaking fast, so snappy. Um, action is just perfect. This thing has broken in so, so well. Um, I have a nice high polish edge on this thing. Um, working with S30V steel. Um, this thing is just uh, great. And I think it looks fantastic. You know, my, my knife tastes have changed over the years, but man, I still think this thing looks freaking badass, man. So that's my Benchmade bug out. I'll probably never sell this thing. Next, this was my second most uh, expensive knife purchase after the bug out. My PM2, my Spyderco PM2. Let me wipe off that blade really quick here. Um, so I had the bug out for a while and I, I started researching knives and um, I came across a video of, uh, I can't remember who it was now, but it was some guy showing you how to reverse flick your, uh, your spider, your spider coats or any knife with a spider hole. But this particular video, uh, this guy was reverse flicking his PM2 and I had never seen anyone do that before. And I was like, Oh my God, what, how is he, how is he even doing that? That looks so cool. Uh, and I just had to have one after I saw, after I saw that. Now it's just second nature to me. That's just how I open this knife and I don't even think about it. Um, but back then I was like, whoa, that is, it looks like magic. Because you can't see anything from the front. It looks like it's just magically popping open. Um, so I had to buy this knife. Um, and same with the bug out. I kind of knew I was going to be replacing the scales eventually. Um, Spydercos do mostly, uh, at least this one, come with G10, which is... Um, Definitely an upgrade from the, the FRN plastic that comes on the bug out, but uh, I still wanted to replace them. Uh, these scales are also from Flytanium, but they're just the classic, um, you know, flat ones without any milling. Well, it's a slight bit of milling here, but um, 
Uh, I liked uh, just the classic flat look for this knife. Um, and then I added a um, MXG deep carry clip to match, kind of the stone washed uh, finish on the scales here. And then I got this uh, brass lanyard hole plug from Flytanium as well. Um, these knives come with a, a lanyard tube in here, but I thought this would look much better. I really love the look of this knife. Um, you know, it looks, uh, it's all monochromatic, but just a little hint of gold there. I think it looks freaking sweet, man. This is my ultimate PM2 S45 VN steel. Let me tell you something. Um, I am happier with this S45 VN on this knife than the M390 that I have, the 20CV that I have. Um, this is my best knife steel. Spyderco's S45 VN is freaking incredible, man. I've had this thing for, uh, let's see, a little over two years, about two and a half years, and I've never sharpened this thing. This is the factory edge. All I do is I strop it um, like every other time I use it, and um, this thing is still like crazy, crazy sharp. So I don't like super duper hard use this thing, but still, that's pretty freaking impressive um, to still have its factory edge after two years. Um, yeah, I just freaking love this knife. The PM2 is an incredible knife. Oh, and I have my uh, my CME on it as well. So this is the, it's called the Compression Lock Made Easy, the CME, and it's made by OCD for EDC. And uh, it basically just brings the face of this uh, compression lock out. So it's flush with the surface of the scale here. So it's much easier to press that down, um, a lot easier. You can almost kind of even do it with this part of your finger. You know, you flick open the knife, you just, bam. It's just so, so easy. And not to mention left-handed, really easy. Um, if you're left-handed, this is a, a must-have for any spider coat with the compression lock that you have. Um, and if you're not left-handed, it's more of just a convenience thing. But um, I, I just freaking love this knife, man. I will never sell this thing. The, uh, the, the titanium scales have gotten a little scratched up over time, but I think it just adds to the character. And um, I love, love, love this knife. All right, next up, um, this is a new one to the collection, and I just made a video on it, so I'm not going to go into too much detail. Go watch that video if you want to see a review on the ZT0562 and titanium, but I am growing to really love this knife. Um, it's a ZT0562. It's a, it's a Rick Hinderer design, so um, it's basically ZT's version of the XM18, uh, very close uh, in aesthetics. Uh, material is a little different. Um, but yeah, I, I really really am liking this knife so far. Listen to that uh, detent snap when it shuts. Yeah, love it. So good. All right, lastly in my top four, it's got to be my Demco 8020.5. Man, when I first saw these, well not these, I first saw the 8020s. Um, but man, I wanted one so bad. <laughs> I mean, you guys know. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have lusted after the 8020s for a long time. And when the 8020.5s came out, a much uh, more affordable and smaller version of the 8020s, um, I was just uh, beyond excited. Uh, but I still couldn't afford one, even at that lower price point, for a little while. But eventually I saved up and was able to get one. And um, man, this knife is just its fantastic. That's all I can, I mean, it's just fantastic. Look at kind of like the uh, the cloudy stone washing on this blade. This is my favorite stone washing I've ever seen on a knife. Look at that. It's almost kind of like cloudy and like, I don't even know. It's like almost like oatmeal or something. I don't even know. It's crazy looking. It's I love it. Um, these scales are aluminum scales from OG Goat. And the milling pattern on here is called the Tesseract. Um, they have a couple different milling patterns available, but I really, really like this one. Kind of reminded me of like some sacred geometry kind of thing. Um, I mean, ideally I would like to have titanium on this knife too, but they were just a little too pricey. Uh, eventually I probably will upgrade to titanium, but the milling pattern on these are just fantastic. I, I really, really like the look of this knife. And the AD 20.5, it was just a, it's such a good design. Um, we have the shark lock. Such easy disengagement. I mean, there's so many ways you can open this knife. You do the thumb studs, 
You can do a reverse flick. You can do a reverse flick from the thumb stud. You can just pull down the lock and flick it out. Or you can do this. So it's just so much fun. Not to mention the sound. Sounds incredible. So this is another one I'll probably never get rid of. Um, it took me so long to get that I, I just couldn't give it up. So those are my top four uh, favorite knives. And now let's get into two honorable mentions. Um, the first one is my Griptilian, my Benchmade Griptilian. Now this one's pretty new to me too, uh, but I am really, really liking it. I'll probably end up replacing the scales probably from um, AWT, I think it is. Um, I think they make some good titanium ones. But, I mean, as you can see, I really love titanium, and I love monochromatic knives. Um, we'll put them all out here at the end, and you'll see them together. But um, this is just such a good design. Um, the only thing I wish it had was a choke-up area. I mean, it kind of does. You can put your finger here. But I'm so used to having choke-up positions on my knives that it feels kind of weird to not have one. But aside from that, I really love this knife. Um, the blade shape's fantastic. Uh, the the uh, hole as the opening method I really love. Um, it's just a, a really good size. It makes a really pronounced thwack when it opens and shuts. Um, I'm really growing to love this guy. And lastly, this is my utility knife. This is my leather cutting knife. It's the Kaiser Rogue, which I've done a lot of modifications to. If you go look up a Kaiser Rogue, it looks a lot different than this. Um, they, for some reason, decided to coat the, a lot of the titanium with a black coating, which I thought looked kind of crappy, so I sanded it off. I flame anodized the, the scale, and then I sanded it back, so it was only anodized in those slots there. Um, and then I anodized the clip. Um, this is an older knife design, um, and they're kind of hard to find now, but I really like this knife. The blade stock is incredibly thick, but it thins down surprisingly thin down here. <coughs> and... I mean, it is just so sharp at the tip. This is my utility cutting knife, like I said. Um, this is just thing is just like a, a big, beefy razor blade. Pretty comfortable in the hand, too. Um, action is not the best. Um, definitely not fall shut, but uh, this knife is functionally amazing. And now that I did all this stuff to it, it I think it looks amazing, too. All right, that's it. Let's set them all out. And you, you can see uh, my theme I got going on here. That almost doesn't fit in the, uh, I'll do them this way. We'll go biggest to smallest. Is the ZT, oh uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put the ZT on top. PM2, then 8020.5, then the bug out, and we'll have to scoot them up a little bit. Kaiser Rogue. That's it. We'll put the Benchmade over here. That's it. These are my favorite knives. I love them so much. Um, I mean, I, I just love looking at them. Just knowing that I possess these makes me very happy. <laughs> and um, that's kind of a lot of what knife collecting is about, right? You know, you collect things that make you happy. And uh, these here bring me a lot of happiness. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Adios.